self-doubt, inadequacy, not enoughness. Do those words sound familiar? Whether you are 17 or 70, this seems to be a universal part of the human condition that never seems to go away. Even one of Israel's greatest leaders, Moses, suffered from it. When God told Moses to tell the Israelites that he would deliver them from their cruel Egyptian slave masters, look at how he responded. Exodus chapter 4 verse 1, they won't trust me. They would listen to a word I say. They are going to say, God appeared to him hardly. And in Exodus chapter 4 verse 10, Oh Lord, I am not very good with words. I never have been and now, and I am now not. And I am not now. I get tongue-tied and my words get tangled. Hmm. Moses taught himself a clumsy speaker and doubted that the Israelites, much less their enemy, King Pharaoh, would listen to him. Even his older brother Aaron had to be his spokesperson for a while. And on one occasion, when negotiations with, Pharaoh's, with Pharaoh didn't go so well, Moses got frustrated and blamed God. Exodus chapter 5 verses 22 to 23. Why have you brought all this trouble on your own people, Lord? Why did you send me? Ever since I came to Pharaoh as your spokesman, he has been even more brutal to your people and you have done nothing to rescue them. Beloved, do those words, do those complaints sound familiar to your own? Pastor, that didn't stop the Lord from using Moses mightily in eventually delivering the Israelites. If you read his story in Exodus, you will see how God continued to boldly tell Pharaoh multiple times, let my people go, and negotiated with the king throughout ten plagues that the Lord sent upon Egypt. Impressive for someone who called himself a satra and a stammerer. And eventually, upon the Lord's direction, Moses picked up his staff, raised his hand over the Red Sea, and God parted it to allow the Israelites to pass through on dry land and escape Pharaoh's pursuing chariots. You have to check out this mind-blowing story in Exodus chapter 14. Even though Pharaoh's army still chased them into the sea, the Lord told Moses to raise his hand over the sea again when the Israelites had reached the other side safely. The sea waters then rushed back together and drawn Pharaoh's entire army. Reference Exodus, Exodus chapter 14 verse 26. All this happened when Moses was 80 years old. Does the story of a flawed man who was still mightily used by God encourage you, encourage you? Even just before Moses split the Red Sea upon God's directive, he was still said to be crying out to God because the Israelites, seeing that Pharaoh's armies were in a hot pursuit, asked him, Exodus chapter 14, verses 11 and 15, Because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Beloved, from the first day the Lord called Moses till he breathed his last, Moses was always aware about his weaknesses as a leader, but this was a man of whom the Lord said when he died at 120 that no prophet has arisen in Israel like him, whom the Lord knew face to face. Deuteronomy chapter 34 verse 10. Perhaps growth in our Christian work is really about this, growing more aware of our inadequacy, but also knowing that those feelings of inadequacy cannot stand in the way of God using us to do great things for him. As the Lord told Paul, another great leader in the Bible, in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, 
My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is perfected, completed, and shows itself most effectively in your weakness. Beloved, knowing you are weak doesn't have to make you feel discouraged with yourself, but it can encourage you to discover the Lord's strength and how much you can depend on him to be enough where you cannot. You have a God, beloved, who loves you and wants to provide for you. Will you allow him to be more than enough for all your not enoughs today? Amen. Share this video and bless your soul. Stay tuned. Bye-bye.